Now, a national constitutional dialogue with eminent Nigerians sitting in Lagos has advocated the setting up of a national referendum commission to collate the provisions of the 1963 constitution, the 2014 national conference, and the amendments by the National Assembly to give Nigeria a new constitution. Arise correspondent Okumbo Oyotunji has the details. Again, Nigeria's 1999 constitution is being dissected here. It is a colloquium in honor of the immediate past leader of the Patriots, a group of non-partisan political leaders of thoughts, Professor Ben Nwabweze, a renowned constitutional lawyer of global repute. The Patriots under Nwabweze joined in pushing the idea of a dialogue which eventually culminated in the 2014 National Conference supervised by the Good Luck Jonathan government. Ten years on, most of the over 600 recommendations of that conference are still pending while the nation battles the challenges to which they already prefer great solutions. But the basis for the speakers and those who have put this together is to set the tone for a discussion on a new constitution that will ride on the back of that confab and other great constitutional recommendations. We are here finally to begin the journey of putting paid to any form of constitutional structure that is not of the making of Nigerians and their due representatives. The fact from across the world is that some pluralistic countries have succeeded in becoming nations, while other pluralistic countries have failed and disintegrated. And the lesson from this is that pluralistic countries which have succeeded in becoming nations have generally practiced true federalism. In what some may describe as a deconstruction of the document that has served as a guide for Nigeria's democracy since 1999, the keynote speaker as well as many others in the room think the 1999 constitution, despite its many amendments, still has the legitimacy question hanging over it. One million amendments multiplied by one million amendments added to one million amendments of the present fundamentally flawed constitution cannot cure it of its original sin. What is that original sin? It is that it was imposed on you and I militarily by a military junta so, these are some of their the suggestions. And the National Assembly state comes in now, sir. Just promulgate a law setting up what I call a National Referendum Commission, NRC, National Referendum Commission. That commission defines its powers to aggregate together the beautiful decisions of the 2014 National Conference, the beautiful provisions of the 1963 Republican Constitution, and the beautiful work you are currently doing in your own amendment. Please, sir, all you need to do is very simple. I summarize. Pass a simple law to enable the peoples, peoples, because we are United Nations of Nigeria, United Nations of Nigeria, to enable our people to sit around the table, to agree. We need to interrogate 1914. Let's, let's understand what exactly happened to us. Why they took it, and my paper answers that. And after the interrogation, then we know how we're going to progress in the future. We are there with Governor Benga Daniel. We will provide our offices to collaborate with these uh, departures and all well-meaning Nigerians to move and promote that bill that will now establish 
like the referendum commission for us to have and make a pathway. Each ethnic group will start through federalism, through federalism, they give them power, they won't do anything. Through federalism will die. Is there any true federalism again in South South? Nadeko came. Did not come? He produced a president. Any change? Is there any change? If we've been doing the same thing over and over again, since 1979, since 1999, and we have not gotten the change that we desire, what is wrong with us? Let's get it practical. Let's remove the gloss, and let's be able to spare and deal with this. Conversations like this, how do we take it forward? Questions, and more questions on why it has been difficult for Nigeria to get its constitutional and governance process right. That is why many here also think that a greater attention should be given to getting the buy-in of the political class. The time, they say, is fast running out for Nigeria to turn its plurality to a greater advantage the way it originally started out in its early days of independence. Tokubo, Oyetunji, Arise News, Lagos. All right, now joining us on this show is Dr. Tunji Abayomi, a constitutional lawyer and a panelist at the National Constitutional Dialogue. Good morning and a warm morning. welcome. Morning, thank you morning for inviting me. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us, sir. Well, we've been on this subject since 1999, since the return to civilian rule, and you've written on it. Your essays on constitutionalism and the duties of a president and on decree number 24 of 1999 <laughs> that gave birth to the 1999 constitution. Now, what is the guarantee that the original founders of the patriots, who were themselves the people who gave us that 1979 constitution, you know, created a unitary constitution mm -hmm. because they thought after the civil war, if you put power at the center, you'll be able to stabilize mm -hmm. the country. Even Professor Nwabuizi regretted mm -hmm. that. Chief mm -hmm. F.R.A. Williams, who was constitution, uh, chairman of the Constitution Drafting Committee that produced the 1979 <laughs> Constitution, joined the Patriots to, to say, oh, we now need a people's constitution. Mm -hmm. In their lifetime, they couldn't achieve that objective. Mm -hmm. The National Conference of uh, 2014 tried to address some of the issues relating to federalism. Now, in 2024, we are now having the same group, the Patriots, coming together and saying, oh, we're still looking for that people's constitution. What is the guarantee that the government of the day will allow it? What is the guarantee that the National Assembly will not insist on sections 8 and 9 of the constitution and say, look, the established procedure for you know, uh, amending or reviewing the constitution cannot be bypassed? Are you optimistic? Despite uh -huh. all the uh, contributions made, you know, yesterday and before now about the need for a people's constitution. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Abad. Uh, your question is actually challenging. Uh, and actually uh, worrisome, uh, reasonably too. Um, there's really no guarantee. The only thing is that when we started this dialogue many, many years ago, we had very few believers. But now we have a conference of believers. I think it's even more interesting that those who actually gave us unitary constitution or military constitution, they are now convinced that this nation cannot move forward or achieve peace, order, or good government unless we rethink the very foundation of our existence, which is actually the Constitution. So are we optimistic? Well, we hope. I will put it that way that our people, particularly the lawmakers, will have an uh, opportunity to think, because quite a number of them were actually at the conference yesterday. 
And many of them didn't really understand the problem. And a lot of people didn't understand. The issue for them was, what would you do with the National Assembly, the structure of government and all of that? All of that, all of, all of these issues were explained yesterday. So to the extent that we have gained greater understanding and greater uh, concern, so to say, and this morning you were talking about Okwama, you know, the, the tragedy, I was watching you on television, the tragedy. These are signs of a problem. So in a situation where we have the continuing crisis, I think that our people are beginning to think that, well, should we not do things differently? This is the foundation of our hope and our and our expectation, so to say, that things will be different for our nation. Thank you for that, Dr. Tunji. Now, I, I was uh, quite engaged to see the excerpt from you speaking yesterday when you were advocating, well, you were reminding people that this is a United uh, Nations of Nigeria, yes. United Nations of Nigeria. Yes. You said that repeatedly. And another speaker also made reference to uh, the failure of nations like Yugoslavia and yes. Czechoslovakia uh, during that same session. Now, in this quest to unpack some of the issues that people don't understand and, as you say, uh, to, to, to get believers to mm -hmm. buy in, mm -hmm. um, when you look at a, something like a case of Yugoslavia, for example, and how Yugoslavia disintegrated, mm -hmm. as we're advocating for true federalism, mm -hmm. some people might argue that under Tito, Yugoslavia was a true federal and he knew how to manage it. But in the absence of a leader who understood federalism, mm -hmm. somebody came in, Milosevic, who now uh, whipped up a national, nationalist sentiment within each of the independent mm -hmm. states of the federation, which made it very easy for the federation to fall apart. Mm -hmm. They all became independent countries mm -hmm. after that. Now, are we not worried about the risk that we run, given the dynamics of Nigeria, that if there is true federalism and the wrong leader or the leader who, who doesn't appeal to the masses comes into power, that it's easier for this country to disintegrate? Well, we really shouldn't have to worry about that because if we study the beginning of our country from independence up to Republican Constitution 1963 and a little bit beyond, the nation was making great progress. It's almost impossible to build a serious nation on forced unity. The issue is in a uh, diverse society, and like I said, the nation is actually uh, United Nations of Nigeria because the our nation in many regards, unique, different from many other nations. If we look at Nigeria, the different ethnic groups are permanently, divinely located in specific geographical zone. I mean, you have the Igbos in the east, largely Yorubas in the west, largely Kanuris in the northeast, Fulanese in the northwest, the Jukuns, and so on and so forth. In a situation like that, it's dangerous. You're simply building dynamo if you want to force unity. That's really what the military do. They took advantage. They thought they could force unity. But you can see that what we have had in this nation is imperfect governance, imperfect society, a lot of disorder and problem. So I do not, based on our experience, it is clear that some level of uh, diversity, take into consideration our diversity and our excellences, so to say, is likely to create for us a more perfect society in Nigeria. So the issue of Yugoslavia, I don't see that as a danger for us in Nigeria. Rather, based on our experience from the past, mm. I think that we are likely to make progress if we decentralize as it is now. We are really in a mess, I'm sorry to say. The federal government takes everything and messes up everything. That's the reality of this nation. And this nation appears to be going in by, from, 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 instead of regenerating, is degenerating continually. So okay. this, this is my thinking. 
I mean, very, very good point you made, sir. But let's weigh every side of it. I'm happy you kept on talking about the United States of Nigeria, as it were. United, United Be- Nations. Or the United Nations of Nigeria, Nations of Nigeria yes. as well, because indeed they are United Nations. Because yes. what we don't talk about a lot, when we talk about 1914, I hear when it's like talking about 1914, yes. it was the fact that at first we had 1906 before yes. 1914, yes. which the Lagos Colony and the Southern Protectorate mm-hmm. were amalgamated. Yes. So there were two units that came into the South. It was yes. not just the South. Yes. Then before we now had 1914, yes. that the Northern Protectorate was I brought with yeah. Lagos Colony, Southern Protectorate, and Northern Protectorate yes. for us to form Nigeria. Yes. But when you look at it over the years, we have also used this method, you know, of giving people the rights, you know, in their own federating units and all of that. And it has also thrown up the issues of minorities yes. that give rise to the Willings Report, yes. which a lot of advocates of the unitary government said that the unitary government was to solve the issues of minority that mm-hmm. came up from the Willings Report, mm-hmm. creation of more states. Some yes. people got their states. Yes, yes. So how do you now balance that conversation? Now? Because what you are saying is let's lump these regions together again mm-hmm. so that the minorities will start crying foul. We all remember when we had regions, yes. that was the, what gave rise to the likes of Isaac and Dakaburu. Yes. That felt short change with the Joe people. And even Midwest. And the great. Midwest. Yes. So are we not, because when you saw, we started disintegrating again mm. to go. So when you say let's lump all together as federating units, mm. are those internal units? going to be coordinated, are they going to seek peace? Is it not another no, problem within its own right they, waiting to happen? The lumping together, well, of course, the structure of our constitution will have to be decided by the peoples of Nigeria. Each part will be But the people are divided. Well, all right, there are people who are... Aguleri is fighting Umbuleri. Yeah. Okonama is fighting, uh, what's it called, Koloba? Uh, all of that can be resolved. If you read my book, State and Citizens, I spoke of the concept of Nigerianity. There, I discussed that the concept of Nigerianity is to focus on the citizens, whether you t- forget about the region, religion, or whatever. The concept of Nigerianity. If we enhance the concept of Nigerianity within the diversity, taking into, into consideration the diversity, you can build a great nation. There is no time that you won't have minority, even sometimes even in the village. So who takes care of them? Yeah, the, the, the law takes care of that. That's the reality. For example, if we look at a, con- a constitution, every nation is to a certain extent is diverse. In the in a, in United States today, I understand that Nigerians are not less than 400,000 or something, or even considerably more than that, you know, you know, and there are lots of other nationalities, yes, nationalities okay. Yeah. But how are these nationalities taken care of? Individuals are taken care of by the law. Once you have a law that protects the rights of citizens, you don't have to worry, you know, the whole essence of, um, of all these um, different commissions is essentially to ensure the protection for the citizens, the minority, the citizen who is a minority. So in a constitution that takes care of the rights of citizens, minorities don't have to worry. The problem we have in this country today is that we don't have a constitution of the people, a constitution where minority says that these are the issues do you that trouble us. We can have it. Okay. There's nothing wrong. Okay. What we need to do is have a sort of, uh, like <laughs> Leopold Senghor said, a universal banquet when we sit around the table and agree on the terms of our, of our unity. In our nation, we have never done that. Lancaster was like a writ of summons. And then after Lancaster, we now ran into military that imposed a constitution. A military that recognized that a constitution is validity is on the people. But so it said, we be, the people. Be, when it because we need so. to go. But you remember yes. the division Lancaster House Talks brought. Yes. So that's why the peculiarities of our people is another challenge. But we need to go ahead this time. Well, thank, thank you, you very so much, much uh, Dr. Yes. Bayomi, for joining us on yes. the morning show. Yes.